This game is called Chaotic. It is by Kathleen and Joe Williams, also known as Marquee Press. They put out three games in the early 90s. Um, Legendary Lives, which has received quite a workout at Adept Play over the last year. Lost Souls, where the characters are ghosts. And Chaotic, which has a quite interesting premise. Where do I start without getting all setting-y on you? Uh, well, okay, there's this other realm or planet or dimension or something. The only contact that we have with it is this technological device that will beam your mind over there where it occupies somebody or something. Um, and there was a crazy scientist and she built the device and started beaming beings over there, trying to transport over there, but only got the minds to go and then eventually beamed her own mind over there and hasn't come back. Decades later, uh, portals are opening from that place onto Earth occasionally, and these dreadful cyber monsters appear, you know, toothy, hulking beings with all this cyber weaponry, and they wreck havoc. And so, all right, without going into all these things, scientists have now, this organization has created, has restored her research, and is using that same old device that she used to use, which they barely understand to be minds over there and figure out what's going on or try to stop it or something. Here's the catch. When you send a bunch of minds over there collectively all at once, they all go into the same body. They don't spread out across bodies. So all this is a long-winded way to say that when you're playing in that part of the setting, you're playing one of the characters who's been beamed over there mentally. So you have one player character body and then all the different players are playing the different minds which are in that body. Now, what's the body? Well, it varies by situation. I mean, it's there. I'm not even sure there's a system for it. Maybe I just, the, the, maybe the game master just says, but you end up in something or someone. It could be a uh, person of great power over there. It could be, uh, you know, one of these mutated, you know, soldier beings. It could be a rejected, you know, mutant. It could be a downtrodden, you know, peasant person. There's all sorts of things. It's this kind of, the, the scientist went over there and created this horrific takeover and like is experimenting on anybody and everybody and it's all gone berserk over there. So um, you could end up in a wide variety of situations of, power of risk of abilities another interesting point is that apparently humans are psionic and have all sorts of psychic powers it's just that they don't work here on earth but they work over there at least when you are beamed over there as a mind and you occupy a body then your powers work so you also have those abilities so effectively uh especially if it's you know that the, the it's it's pretty much presumed that sooner or later, if not right away, but hopefully as soon as possible, you do get beamed into one of these cyber warrior monster types, and then you've got you know all the minds in there uh, jostling for position. If you decide to get along inside the critter's head or the person's head, that's great. If you don't, then there are power struggles, and that's interesting too. Also, if everybody you know agrees and there's a role, well, anyway, the point is is that you can jump to another body. Um, so you're, you're kind of an interesting, you know, collective being over there on earth. Uh, it's 2030, um, as conceived in 1994 in some detail. And so there's all sorts of conspiracies and all sorts of distorted politics, all sorts of problems, and your characters are fairly vivid and they're involved with this organization in one fashion or another voluntarily or involuntarily. And so there's all kinds of problems that can happen over there. So on Earth, you are playing, of course, a person in your own body. And everybody's playing kind of regular player characters. You don't have your psionic abilities, but you do have all sorts of, you know, gear and you have skills and stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it's a little more open-ended what can happen on Earth. A little less focused as to, you know, being on a mission or something when you're mind zapped over you know to the to the scary place 
Well, anyway, it's a fairly elaborate and personalized setting, much more so than any, either of the other games they did. There's a lot of personalities, the staff, the backstory for the scientific organization is quite detailed, the political problems of Earth at the moment and the significant personalities involved are, you know, all carefully uh, detailed. So the Game Master is kind of handed a lot of dynamic stuff to use. Uh, there's no inkling whatsoever of what can happen from that point forward, which I find kind of kind of exciting. Um, there's a lot of material and there's literally nothing to know or have to know or have to obey or have to bring into the forefront or not um, about anything in it. You you know, are looking at it and going, wow, what can happen with all this stuff in the mix? Um, the character creation system, they the, their system and character creation system is clearly, you I mean, Legendary Lives is part of a bunch of general principles that the authors were working on and playtesting and tweaking in different ways. There are a couple of things about this. The, the dice are different. They are not a, a percentage dice. You still have your gradations from catastrophic to unbelievable, which is what they call it, um, in a, a set of gradations. And you roll and you're going to land on one of those spots. If your skill or whatever is rated at that level or, or better, then it succeeds. And the, anyway, roll better than what you, what you need, roll better than what you've got. If you're rolling kind of against yourself, then you do great. Um, it's a little bit, I think, less kind of swingy because they have a bell curve in the dice this time. Uh, it's a dice pool thing. You're rated in numbers and you roll that many dice. And so it's not a, it's, it's not a Marvel superheroes thing where you're like looking at the same ratings down this and the same ratings across the top and see where you get. No, you actually roll for a number, but it's the same system. Actually, it's just different verbiage for it. Um, but the, the curve is different though. Um, I'd like to map it one of these days. It's, it, it, it looks a lot different from the one from Legendary Lives. And the reason for that is that you're rolling one to upwards of 10, one, you know, really you're probably not rolling one. You're the rolling three or is, is a pretty shitty roll. So you're probably rolling somewhere, you know, a small handful to a large handful of six-sided dice. And you roll them, and you ignore fours, fives, and sixes, and you total up the rest. So we've been discussing the curve for this over at Discord, and it's interesting. There's also explosions. Um, if all your dice comes up, come up three, um, there's, anyway, the bits. There's a couple of fiddly little bits in there. Um, the, uh, there's a max, I think 13 is the, the highest result. So 13 and above is all the same result. So there's an interesting little kind of chunk in the, in the outcome curve there that somebody will have to model one of these days. Well, anyway, it's a very, um, a very interesting take on legendary lives because again, you're kind of getting a, a bell and that is something that we I think would welcome, if I'm not mistaken, from our experiences with that game. A um, few other interesting things. There is an advancement system, but it's clearly reluctant. And the, the, the text is very grudging, doesn't really want to do it. Um, it. It actually says that, you know, maybe you're better off just finding another agent and playing someone else the next time you play because... It's really built to play as is. And I actually might even argue um, they, they, disallow, they, they don't disallow advancement in all the different pieces of the character sheet, but they make some of it so, so expensive. And they even say, you know, it's not really meant to do this, that you're kind of like, well, why don't you just red pen that out? And so I can see some developing your psionic abilities, for example, does strike me as fairly uh, exciting and important if for a continuing character, but really there's no point in, you know, becoming better at, you know, how good a truck driver you were before you started this up. 
the character creation system is actually, it's been through the mill. They were really interested in it. You, you mainly uh, start just by a profession and legendary lives fashion. There's the, the choice to roll for it, which is more fun in this case. And so you get your profession. There's a whole bunch of them. They range all the way from being a prisoner who's effectively forced or reluctantly agreed to do this or a lab rat person or all sorts of things like that all the way to like a, you know, as a senior researcher or a politician, or there's a bunch of course, which are military oriented. A good third of them are nuances of military. So you, you, would get a fairly cool batch. I've actually rolled up a few characters and you, you get a pretty cool batch of backgrounds and things that sets your, um, you, you have subsets for each one, which you roll on those. So you might end up, for example, being um, a psychologist. So, okay, you're a psychologist and then you roll again and you might be a psychiatrist. You might be a social worker, you might be a pop psychologist, which is what I've rolled. Actually, it's kind of cool. You end up getting like, you know, all sorts of, you know, all sorts of sly or, you know, charismatic stuff. Well, anyway, um, you end up with a profession and a type, and then that ends up giving you all your numbers. Basically, you get a pool of points to distribute, you know, some more among skills if you want, but you get your skills, your and you get your numbers and stuff pretty much just by those. And um, actually sc scattering the skills around is is kind of, you're kind of like, oh man, now I got to distribute some skills. I, I want it to be done. But anyway, that's pretty much what you end up with. They've got some interesting other details about setting up the backstory because um, as, again, Legendary Lives Wise, um, you've got your backgrounds that you roll. They're not quite as extensive or as subdivided as they are in Legendary Lives, but you end up with a character. You might end up with somebody who belongs to an unpopular political party, a fringe party. You may end up with somebody who you know has a, is divorced uh, or is happily married, or you may end up with somebody who has you know a shining ideal. There's lots of good things and bad things that you might end up with those. Um, anyway, it's. It's an interesting looking thing. According to the authors, they wanted uh, another year of playtesting in retrospect. They, they said the game as published really wasn't ready. And I'm looking at it and I'm you know, noting a couple of points about the dice. For example, it's harder to get the exploding results as you are better numerically. So maybe that's something. I mean, I'm not going to try and go through and guess everything that they considered didn't work and who knows sometimes when you you know spot something like that it ends up being a feature for some reason um it's kind of an interesting idea you know maybe when you're worse at it then your dumb luck is really spectacular right so it's interesting um i'm uh i'm interested in what can happen i'm real interested in the collective play mental collective play in the body of this single uh, being. Um, I'm interested to keep combing through the rules and seeing if there's some thing that helps you set up scenarios and situations so that your choices when you're beamed over to that other place and like, oh, we need to jump into another body. Well, I mean, who's over there then? I don't know. I mean, it may just kick it all to the game master and say, make an interesting scenario, or it may have some more methodology for it that I haven't found yet. Um, but the characters are reasonably vivid. They end up having just enough, I think, they end up having just enough distinction among them where they might get along or they might not. Um, it all seems rather open-ended. Their example character, uh, one of them actually goes rogue and tries to join the, the evil scientist. You know, there's There seems to be kind of an admission that We've got a whole bunch of vivid characters and they've got opinions and they're in a dangerous situation and cooperation is a good thing. Cooperation might not be a good thing. What's, what are they going to do? What, what will happen here for you, for them? That's cool. I'm, I'm interested. Chaotic looked like a, looks like it was a really good idea and it, uh, I, I would actually probably play it with all of the um, 
1994 concept of 2030 in place. That actually takes a little bit of work. It's a, it's not intuitive anymore. Back in 1994, you read about, oh, well, this is what the clothes are like. This is what the phones are like. Stuff like that. And you and you can kind of see everybody going, oh, I can, I can get with that. Now you, of course, are fighting the actual future when you're conceiving of that. And it's hard not to do it ironically or snarkily. So, you know, the, the, the retro future thing can be good, but if you overdo your own perspective on it, then I think it becomes a, kind of a tedious, um, pointless exercise. But still, I'd like to do that. They put a lot of work into that. It's kind of cool to say, let's go ahead and adopt their future and, um, and, and see what our characters do in it. Um, that's uh, that's my thoughts. Um, I couldn't help myself. I actually made. I was just. It's too much. It's like Legendary Lives. It's just too much fun to make up characters. And so, you know, where's that? Uh, where's that? Uh, that pop psychologist dude I was talking about. Oh, here we go. Right. Um, this is all rolled. All right. Uh, he's his talent is um, ESP. So any role for that too. So. The point is, is that the, the psionic talent you get might not actually be optimized for your scores. Every talent has a whole bunch of things it can do and you pick. And so it's meaningful. It makes sense to optimize a couple and say, all right, that's one's based on strength. My character's strong. I'm going to use that one. Um, and that's great. But they don't always match too well. And so in his case, uh, he ended up with uh, the psionic abilities of uh, dark vision, premonition, remote viewing, and time shift, of all things. So he's, he's kind of a, a weird awareness type guy. But he can't, for example, read emotions. He doesn't have empathic abilities. He can't read minds. He can't do, like, psychologist things. That's not where his psionic talent lies. And I kind of like that. kind of like the idea that you end up being mentally in a different niche than you do physically and socially in ordinary circumstances. That's, that's kind of neat. Um, let's see, what else we got? Oh, man, I'm, I'm going to run it down. He's male. He's 22, which is young. They all end up kind of young, you ask me. Um, I don't see how you can be a pop psychologist at 22, but whatever. Um, average height and weight. He is striking in appearance based on his charm score. Um, he's got dark gray eyes and auburn hair. Uh, his hair is short and wavy. Uh, he values respect. And whether that's sort of an I get respect and I value it and I'm not going to let it go, or whether it's like more, dude, where's my respect? Who knows? Um, we'll take a look at his background in a minute for that. Um, attitude. Skeptical. So, you know, kind of this, I, I'm seeing kind of a, a pop psychologist, but not one of these. Well, who knows? That's an interesting combination. You know, maybe it means he's cynical. Maybe it means he's skeptical of anything except his particular brand of self-help or whatever. Um, okay, so he's got a friend with a common goal. He's got an enemy who is his boss. Uh, he's got a dark secret, which is that he was a petty criminal as a teen and he's got a lover who was killed in a mission for the same agency doing what he's doing now. This is kind of all over the place. And I might, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, looking across these characters, whether it's better to permit one of the backgrounds to be crossed off. Because I noticed they tended, they didn't snap together as well as they do in Legendary Lives. So I was thinking that um, it's cool to roll four, and then if you want kill one of them. I'd probably get rid of the lover. That seems kind of kind of out of left field. Um, but putting the others together, the person obviously has like all these tensions about their job and their background and stuff like that. So their image at home has been a big deal for them. Um, and so valuing respect in that regard, right? Okay, that's making a little more sense. That's like, okay, I've got respect as a celebrity pop psychologist and I'm going to keep it, right? Nobody, enemy boss, my ass, you know, I got this. So um, that I'm getting sort of, a, you know, a good idea for them. That would lead me very nicely to a name and then deciding where to scatter those points, the extra points that I get to ramp up a few skills. 
Um, but it's kind of cool. Um, I like the fact that uh, it really leads you, I think, to not over uh, to not overvalue um, overall character competence. Your character is going to be very much who they are, and if they don't know how to fight with their fists, okay. When we're over there, you know, in the body of the violent mutant, you know, that we're all trying to control, we're all, you know, riding it basically as possessors. Um, you know, so one of the other characters is going to be skilled with fighting and we'll just give up control of the body to that character, you know, for, for the fight, stuff like that. So, um, the, the potential, they can talk to each other right inside the, inside the head. So, um, there's all kinds of fun for that. Anyway, looking forward to it. Anyone wants to play? Uh, this is for 2021. I mean, I'm looking way ahead here, but in the foreseeable future, uh, let me know.